today we are going on a road trip to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, but this time with BAM. Okay, so it looks like we are pulling up on our place. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Bank Geek Vlog. Today's date is July 2nd, 2021. This is our third day here, second full day here. Today, my parents, little brother, and I are going to go to a Native American reservation. Uh, Zach and Emily are going to do pretty much their own thing, I believe. But yeah, this reservation is a Cherokee reservation in North Carolina, about an hour away from here. So yeah, let's see where that goes. So this will be like a reenactment replica type village. Yeah, it's not a real. They, they created yeah. it to be authentic. It, it's a replica. You put your phones on silent, but you're allowed to take videos, pictures, do a lot. Try not to touch any of the crabs in front of you. Some are very old. You want to follow me? We'll get started. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dylan West. I'm glad that y'all are here today. And welcome to our square grounds, or ceremonial grounds. Now, will always be in the center of the village. This is right in front of the council house. And depending on the size of the village, it can be as small as this, or as big as a football field, or even bigger. Just depending on what that village needed. Now, you can see there is a wall of sand that surrounds it. That's where it gets its name from. And each corner will be designated to one of the four directions. With our entrance always facing east where the sun rises, as it symbolizes a good day, new life, and new beginning. Now surrounding the square grounds will be seven arbors like you see here. Each one will represent one of the seven Cherokee clans. And when you come to a ceremony or dance, you always see it at your own clan's arbor. Each clan had their own unique skills, responsibilities to the village. None of them were seen higher than the other. They would all work together to help benefit the village as a whole. Now first clan right over here, that is our blue clan, Anisha Honey. If a child was orphaned or wasn't born into a clan, they'll act as their caretakers until they are adopted, and they also doctor on our children at a young age, so by the time they reach adulthood, they should be immune to all diseases in the area. Now, they were known to make medicine from the Blue Holly plant, and that's where the Blue Clan gets its name. Now, our next clan right here is the Pain Clan, Aniwodi. They were our wise men, healers, and even our medicine man. They also had the responsibility of gathering materials to make our paints for our ceremonies. We'll make red from iron ochre, black from hickory ash, and white from our crush and burnt seashells. Now, as you can see, the mask is painted red and black. That is what our warriors will wear when they go to battle. Red will signify strength and power, while black represented death and hatred. And depending on how much he wears, other two colors will determine his attitudes towards the war. Not only will it be face paint, he'll cover his whole body in those paints. Now, our most respected clan right here is the bird clan, Anizi Shkwa. They were our historians and storytellers. Not only that, only members from this clan were allowed to harvest feathers from the eagle. When a young man reaches a point in his life, he'll be given the task to do so. But they'll do it at a time when the bird is naturally molting, so there'll be no harm done when they pluck the feathers. Now our most hardworking clan right here, which is the wild potato clan, Anigotigewi. They were basically seen as our earth protectors. They were in charge of all of the agriculture in the village, made sure that all of the gardens were in top shape, and they would collect seeds for next year's harvest, and they were also in charge of the storage house right over there. Now, if you weren't giving back to the community, if you weren't important to your responsibilities or being selfish or anything, basically a slack jaw, you can be punished for that, and they were in charge of the punishments. So the next time we have a ceremony, you won't be allowed to or permitted in. You can actually be tied to a punishment post outside of the square grounds. And our dances can last for several days and even up to a week. So it depended on your maternal family or your clan family to help feed you. So it's best not to mess with that clan. Our next clan right over here is the Dare Clan, Ani Awi. And they were our foot messengers and foot runners. We never use smoke signals or drums to send out our messages because the smoke will only disappear above the treetops and into the clouds because we are in the Great Smoky Mountains and there are clouds everywhere. So that would be impossible. Basically a lost signal. <laughs> And then we never used drones because they would only echo and fade away in our mountains and valleys. So we would send out messengers. We would use a relay system, a relay system and how that would work. We'll send one messenger from this village and go on to the next. And that village will send their own and so on and so on until that message is reached. So with this relay system, we can send messages as far as a hundred mile radius 
in just 24 hours. Now our most largest clan over there is the Wolf Clan, Aniwaya. Most of our warriors and war chiefs will come from that clan, but anyone can be a warrior, man or woman as she chose, but specifically in this clan, they'll raise and teach our children on how to become a warrior. Now when you come back from battle, there was no reason to brag about what you did on the battlefield. Your friends and companions saw what you did, and they'll gather amongst themselves and have a little council and discuss who will be the next war chief. You can be a war chief for many battles, or you can be a war chief for only one battle. And after that said battle, you can be taken away from that position as well. But we wanted very prideful people back then. If we needed to step down, we would do so. And they were the only clan allowed to hunt and kill the wolf. Now finally, our last clan right over here, which is the long-haired clan, Anigilohi. They were our peacemakers and peace chiefs, even our diplomats and politicians. So if there was a scuttle going on between one of the clans, you would go to a member of that clan to help resolve the issue. Now they were also known as the Twisting Hair Clan or the Twister Clan, because both men and women from this clan would wear their hairs in elaborate hairdos, walk in very proud and vain manner, twisting their shoulders as they walk, and that's where you get the Twister Clan. So basically all the good looking people came from that clan. <laughs> now how this clan system was set up, it was made to make sure there was no incest or inbreeding going around, and if there was, the punishment was death. And how we would pass down our clanship is through the women of the tribe. So when you're born, you'll inherit your mother's clan, and when you marry, you marry into your wife's clan. Now you never marry into your own clan, you'll marry into another clan, because your clan was basically your whole family and you don't want to intervene with them. When a divorce would happen, of course it happened back then, not as much today, but when it did happen, if the couple was no longer happy with each other, or if the wife was no longer happy with her husband, or if he was failing the basic needs to provide for his family, all the wife had to do was gather his belongings and set them outside the house. He'll see what happened, he'll just have to gather his belongings, move back into his mother's clan, and the wife will keep the house, the children, and even the family garden. So basically it was instant result of no paperwork required. <laughs> We can, it was basically, we almost had a little bit of polygamy, but not as much as the Mormons. Ooh, no, no, no. <laughs> it was, it was not common, but it wasn't rare. It did happen. One of my famous figures, his name is Solly. At the end of his lifetime, he had seven wives. <laughs> basically, he took care of those wives because their husbands would die either disease or warfare. So he took care of them in that lifetime. My name is Michelle. I'm going to be telling you about how our government was and also women's role in society prior to and after European contact. So this is our council house. Every village had one. The size of it would have depended upon the size of that particular village. Every man, woman, and child would be taken into account when constructing one since everyone took part in these meetings. Now, you'll notice there's seven sections of seats. This was to go along with our seven clans. We did live by a clan system back then, not so much today, but we can always trace our clans back through our mother's side of the family since we were and still are a matrilineal society. We had two chiefs back then also. We had a peace chief and a war chief. No two chiefs were in office at the exact same time. The peace chief wore this cape that you see hanging up back there. It's made out of the breast feathers of the wild turkey. The one over here is made out of the tail feathers of the wild turkey. The war chief wore that one. The top is dyed black, signifies war, death, hatred. And then the bottom is dyed red, and that signifies blood. Now, we would have a skirt, and it would be, it would look just like this, but it would be a skirt. It would be made out of the breast feathers of the wild turkey. So that one would have been worn by our beloved woman. The beloved woman was an older lady who lived within the village who was held in such high regards that everyone called her the beloved woman. She would have a council one from six of these clans, so all seven of them together, they would be called the beloved women or the war women. Now they were so powerful, they got to determine what to do with the prisoner of war. Rather they be put to death, rather they be adopted into one of these clans, or rather they serve the village as being a full-time slave. Now they also had to determine whether or not to go to war or even take part in peace talks. This day and time, 
we still do have a council house, though it does not serve the same stature as it did many years ago. We have a principal chief, a vice chief, and two council members per community. We have a total of seven communities. We span across 56,000 square acres of land. There is approximately 16,000 enrolled members of the East Band of Cherokee Indians. Now, there was approximately a thousand back during the Trail of Tears that ran and hid in the mountains. So most of us that you see today are the direct descendants of those that have ran and hid. Now, I'm sure when you all came into town, you probably saw signs that said welcome to the Cherokee Indian Reservation. Well, those signs are just to let you know we are here and we exist because we are known as the Kuala Indian Boundary. What that means is we own our own land. The government did not give this land to us. Back during the boarding school era, that happened between 1836 up to 1996, that is when the U.S. federal government deemed all Native Americans to be merciless Indian savages, actually written in our Constitution of the United States of America. They would build these large residential schools, come into these villages with handcuffs and take these little children, ages three and up, away to these large schools where upon arrival they were prohibited from speaking any of their language. They couldn't practice any of their cultural belief. They had their hair cut as soon as they got off the wagon or whatever took them there. There was a mass grave up in Canada of 215 little bodies that were found in that mass grave. Little kids who probably just spoke the language, you know, and they probably, one of the punishments was to get killed. So a lot of this day and time, you know, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, grandmas, and grandpas actually did go to these schools. So that's where a lot of our language has gotten to because people don't want to, you know, talk about what they saw in these schools, nor do they want to even speak any other language. But, you know, thanks to the immersion school and also it being taught in the surrounding counties, it does help out a lot because there's only approximately a thousand people that can speak it full time. Now, we didn't become citizens of the United States of America up until 1924. We couldn't vote up until the mid-1960s. And that was in thanks to the American Indian movement. So here we were fighting with United States of America, for United States of America, and we weren't even citizens of the United States of America. All right, well, I hope y'all learned something. Your next stop, if you have not been up there, is going to be the, to the square ground. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Sugar Lands, again, Zach. Okay, right, so she has never actually had moonshine before, so um, she's in for a ride. Oh, no, So let's get started. The first thing we try is not on the menu. This is the Undertaker's board grade, not the wrestler. That would have been badass. I'm <laughs> disappointed just like you are. It's an 80 proof moonshine flavored moonshine, so this stuff will make you hit on your cousin. You're going to want to shoot it back like whiskey, drink your nose, out of your mouth, make it sound like Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> this is, if this is actually, this is the pure stuff. This is going to be rough. Tastes like acid. To me, it tastes like rotten eggs, but okay. I took a shower yesterday. Not you, this. Well, asshole! <laughs> hey, ready? Go! Woo! That's not bad. It's not what I thought it was going to be. It's not what I thought it was going to be either. This is gonna taste like big bag gum. 
Today's been pretty good. Um, went to the Cherokee Nation, got this pretty cool necklace over there. Tomorrow we go hiking. I think we're going to Grotto Falls, which is where we hiked with our friends last year. I'm pretty sure that's all we have for today, so I'm just gonna call it a night. I'll see you all very soon. This is me, signing out. <laughs>